So now let's just look at what is NLP? What's the definition of NLP first of all? Well, NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. So Neuro is the study of the nervous system and the mind. So it's how we think through which our experiences are processed by our five senses, which is visual, auditory, kinesthetic, which is feeling, olfactory, which is smell, and gustatory, which is taste. And so this experience that we have, all of everything that happens to us, all of our experiences actually happen inside of our own neurology. So even to the extent that you know we might have a, a shared experience with somebody else that still happens inside of our own neurology next we've got language and so linguistic is the the study of language and other nonverbal communication through which our neural representations are coded ordered and given meaning and this includes pictures sounds feelings, tastes, smells, and the words that we use, our, our self-talk. So it's our language and how do we use it. Programming then is the ability to discover and to utilize the programs that we run in our neurological systems to achieve our specific and desired outcomes. So how do we communicate with ourselves? Yeah, or the sequence of our actions and how we can motivate ourselves. So in other words, NLP is how do we use the language of the mind to consistently achieve our specific and desired outcomes. NLP then really is a study of excellence in discovering excellence and being able to utilize it in such a way that we can create change in ourselves and others. And it begins with this attitude of curiosity and a willingness to experiment. We have this curiosity and this willingness for experimentation and we create these results through modeling this excellence of people who are most excellent in their fields. Now NLP is a do with process and not a do to process. You know often people ask, they say make me stop smoking or make me lose weight or do this to me. Now, as an NLP practitioner or as a coach or as a hypnotherapist, whatever modality you're doing and using, we wield no power over the client. At the end of the day, it's the client's decision to take whatever change, whatever actions, whatever their goal is and what they want to achieve. They physically need to take the action to achieve that. We simply have a way of helping the client to be able to achieve that, that success that they want. NLP has also been described as an attitude and a methodology that leaves behind a trail of techniques. And the study of subjective experience and how it affects our behavior. And this comes back to this idea of we have an experience that happens outside of us. And yet we have it with inside. We interpret it with inside our own neurology. And of course the realization that the words that we use do not describe the world that we live in but rather actually determine the world that we live in. NLP was created by John Grinder and Richard Bandler. And so around 1975, Richard Bandler was a student at California University in Santa Cruz. And John Grinder was a linguistics professor there. Now Bandler was editing a book by Fritz Perls, who was the creator of Gestalt Therapy. And Richard found that he was actually quite good at doing Gestalt Therapy. And he found that he had the specific gift in modeling. And so modeling is being able to actually take what works that someone else is doing and to be then doing it for yourself. So this is where this notion of NLP being a, a attitude and a methodology that leaves behind a trailer techniques comes from. The idea of actually being able to look and see what excellent behavior is that somebody else might be doing and being able to learn that excellent behavior and being able to install that in ourselves. And so it's this desire to really find out how is that person doing the thing that they're doing. And so in modeling people that are excellent in behavior, we're looking for what are their strategies, what are their values, their beliefs, their physiology. You know, all the things 
What is it that really makes them be able to do that? And then separating what is necessary from what is idiosyncratic in creating that behavior. So what's necessary to create that behavior? And you know what are the things that they do that don't actually contribute to creating that behavior? So you can actually learn how to do modeling. In fact, doing Master Practitioner, we actually teach you how to do modeling and you're going to do a modeling exercise. So you learn how to be able to model excellent behavior, how to install that in yourself, and also then how do you train other people so that they can create those same results. And the best of all is all of that happens in much less time than it took the original person to learn that excellent behavior in the first place. Now, the three major people that were modeled by Bandler and Grinder in the early days were Milton Erickson, Virginia Satir, and Fritz Perls. So, NLP actually has quite a respectable body of knowledge, and you know, it has its background in a number of intellectual disciplines. And I believe the field of NLP is simply going to grow in the future as leaders start to model and recreate excellence in other modalities from experts in those fields so that they can add it to the existing techniques taught within NLP. So that's all well and good, but what is NLP useful for? Well, plainly, NLP is actually useful in all areas of our lives, from business, to therapy, to education, to our own personal lives, helping to empower ourselves and other people that we interact with. As an example, the NLP communication model helps us to understand how we create our own internal representations, how we hold that internal representation in our head, which makes a difference in how we produce our state, our physiology, and ultimately our behavior, which of course impacts on our performance. With the keys to achievable outcome and well-formedness conditions, helps us to know our outcomes. What is our goal? How are we going to achieve that goal? So what do we need to do? Being able to build rapport is an invaluable skill in therapy, in business, in education, in general life. Being able to create that feeling of trust is conducive to an effective communication. Understanding other people's preferred representational systems is useful. Knowing the predicates that they use, so the types of words that you need to use as you speak to them so that they really get what it is that you mean. Have you ever heard somebody say, I don't see what you mean or I, I don't get a feeling for that. Well, actually, they're telling you exactly what you should be doing to explain what you're saying in a different way. The thing is, most people just don't realize it. Understanding how we say and how we can say the exact same thing in different ways so that it actually means different things to the listener. So it's really important also then to be able to say what it is we want to say in the right way to get that message across. Understanding eye patterns and what people are really doing when they move their eyes in different directions as you speak to them. You know, what are they doing? How do they access information and how do we need to speak to them? Submodalities are very useful in creating very quick change and results to help yourself and other people with things like minor negative states or behaviors. How about getting rid of something that, you know, maybe the person doesn't like and they really should be liking, example, eating vegetables because it's necessary for their health. Or somebody who eats way too much chocolates and wants to stop eating chocolates so that they can lose weight. Or help them get rid of some limiting beliefs. We've got the hierarchy of ideas, which is really useful in communication to understand do we need to talk in big picture or more details. It's really useful utilizing it in negotiation or arbitration. The meta model is useful because it helps us to get really specific with the person that's speaking to us and understanding what are they really saying to us. Have you ever had somebody you ask them to do something and they went and did the task, but actually it wasn't what you asked them to do, and yet they thought that they'd done that. So knowing how to get very specific, both in our own language as well as the people that we're speaking with and understanding what do they truly mean.
metaphors, of course, you know, stories have been useful throughout the ages. Storytelling is very powerful in getting results and also really, really useful to use with children. Anchoring to, to create or change your state. Example, get motivated in an instant. Feeling happy, feeling confident. Easily get rid of procrastination. You know, understanding strategies that people use. Say, for example, what's their decision-making strategy? How does somebody decide that something is the right thing for them? Imagine being able to utilize that in sales. Understanding whether our strategies work for us or not. Imagine that you had somebody who is a compulsive buyer. And so they're buying way too much. And, you know, they might have a bit of a problem there. And they come to you and they ask, help me to stop buying things just willy-nilly. So understanding strategies are really useful. Of course, parts integration. So you've heard people say that on the one hand, I want to do this. On the other hand, I want to do that. And so we've got this internal conflict that are going on. And so doing parts integration reduces this incongruence at the unconscious level and helps to prevent all this energy that's being wasted within this incongruence and this internal conflict. Timeline therapy is definitely the way to go to let go of negative emotions and limiting decisions. Get rid of phobias and fears and PTSD really quickly. Get rid of anger, sadness, hurt, guilt and all the other negative emotions. Now these are just some of the techniques that you learn during the life training and just some of the things that NLP can help with. You see people are getting phenomenal results using these skills in different settings in all areas of life. Whether they teachers, parents, business owners, salespeople, psychiatrists, doctors, coaches. In fact, it doesn't matter whichever capacity you work with other people. In fact, I get a lot of doctors and psychologists that come and do the training because they're looking for additional techniques and additional methodologies that they can use to get very quick results with their clients. So these techniques taught in NLP have far-reaching benefits. So next, let's look at cause and effect and what that means to us.